Let's do it. Three, two, one. And welcome to another episode of the Hood Grace Podcast. It's your boy, Reverend Rudy Rubio from the Reformed Church of Los Angeles here in the city of Linwood. Uh, but it's not just the Hood Grace Podcast. It is also the Coramdeo Podcast. This is your boy, Danny Ramos, <laughs> together with <laughs> Louis Munoz. Yeah, you got it. And I like the name. I like the name the Rev give it. It was a two for one podcast. So I get that one. Two for one podcast. Two for one podcast. Like, hey, like I was telling you guys, it's been a minute, bro. It's been a minute since I've had a chance to sit down and just be able to. I think it's been like at least three months. Sin mm-hmm. exagerar. At least three months since I've had a chance to to do something. And I, I, I when I started my podcast, I did things messed up. I got a couple of dudes at my church. Shout out to Alex the Rebel who is going to show me how to do it on this new platform, I think called Anchor, uh, where it's for free and all kinds of other stuff. So um, even if I lose my previous um, uh, recordings, I got everything on YouTube like this. So I'm all good, you know, but um, actually that's our, that's our uh, main um, distributor, if you want to call it Anchor. Anchor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, So so maybe you guys can, can give me some pro tips later on, but yeah, (laughs) man. So for me, um, Hood Grace podcast is just something I kind of spun off. I don't know if you ever seen the one I had before, Danny, with my homie Selah, uh, a black brother from, uh, yeah, yeah. from South Central LA. Yeah. It was it was Grace and Two Fingers, Grace and Peace. Uh, and then he got busy and I got busy. So people were asking me to keep on doing it. So uh, I borrowed the, the hashtag Hood Grace from a homie Bernard up in in, uh, in Oakland. And, um, and, and here we are now. You know what I mean? Um, I think the last one I did was about three months ago with a local uh, African-American pastor, Nissan Stewart, my boy. He pastors Greater Emmanuel Temple. We we're just talking about like the pandemic, the black, brown, and white tension, how that's invaded, you know, uh, Christianity. Um, and that was like three months ago, bro. And so much stuff has happened since then. But tell us about Coram Deo and, and what, what you guys are about and where you're at right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the the honor to Lou, uh, Lou my boy Louis to to take that privilege. <laughs> yeah. Uh me and Danny, we started um, uh, Coram Deo just by us. Uh, he invited me over his house, and we were talking. And uh, and I said, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to uh, start a podcast. I was thinking through it. I had a podcast yeah, of my own. Started, uh, um, uh, and Deo, what ended up happening was, uh, yeah, Danny just uh, said, hey, man, if you ever need a second person in the chair, you let me know. And uh we just started talking and, and he had the idea for uh, living before the face of God, you know, um, and Coram Deo. And, and y'all had to get like really Christian, like super Christian, like <laughs> Coram Deo, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. And then the rest was history, man. We we just try in the beginning, we wanted to do like exposition. Um, and we still do that from time to time, like just going uh, verse by verse, breaking things down. We haven't did that in a, in a while, though, but... <laughs> Um, but then, but then we, we figure out real quick que a la gente le gusta el bochinche. You know, they like the, the juicy <laughs> stuff out there. So we're like, you know what? Well, maybe we should just go, you know, with the, what people want to hear. Yeah. Let's just do a Christian TMZ, bro, and just make it simple. You know what I mean? <laughs> no study involved, no nothing, you know? Puro, puro bochinche is how y'all say yeah. in, in Boricua <laughs> letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Go, go, yeah. go. Hey, well, really quick before we get started, shout out to the homie Jonathan Gonzalez, John DePresby up in Reno, Nevada. Uh, shout out to the homie, uh, Jonathan Reyes. He is now, Jonathan, where the hell are you at? He was in Chicago. <laughs> I think he's in North Carolina. North Carolina or Virginia. Or he, he went out to the East Coast, which is actually the South, right? Or something like that. And he's pastoring their church now. So shout out to him. I'm really glad to see him moving on up uh, in ministry yeah. and yeah. using his gifts for the glory of God. Amen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, for, for those people that are going to be watching Coram Deo or listening to Coram Deo, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Reverend Rudy Rubio. I'm an ordained minister of Word and Sacrament in the Reformed Church in America, uh, pastor, church planter at Reformed Church LA. Uh, the way you guys said Coram Deo, I had to take it like one step further and just make it like, like hella reformed. You know what I mean? Like, what are we going to call the church? We're going to call it Reformed Church LA. <laughs> we claim it all LA. <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was part strategic and part just throwing it out there who we are, you know? Uh, there's a lot of reformed churches who have softened so much on the reform that they're like evangelish or evangelifish or whatever that mm-hmm. that 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 idiom is, um, and have removed reform from their name. We want to live into it. This is who we are. 
you know? Yeah. Um, and, and we wanted to stake a claim in LA. We know that people will look for reformed churches in and then whatever area they're at. So it, it's, it's worked for us. But um, how did you guys come up with the name, you know, Coramdeo? Yeah, um, Coramdeo, uh, honestly, real simple, keeping it short, through uh, Ligonier Ministry. Reading, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, enjoyed reading through uh, their table talks and just reading through their website. And I, I saw that uh, the, the phrase Coramdeo was a, a phrase that uh, R.C. Sproul uh, used a lot. Yeah, uh, and just learning the meaning behind it, you know, living under the un, under the authority of God, you know, before the face of God, uh, just uh, gave us that uh, idea. Like Louis, Louis said that he he and he still does. Uh, before the before the podcast, Louis was coming over to my house once a week, and we were just sitting down hours long, just talking theology. Right, uh, Louis from uh, from. Um, from a reform perspective and me from a reform perspective. Uh, <laughs> Your understanding of what reform was yeah. at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that led to uh, like Louis said, the idea of like, you know what? Um, he was thinking already about doing a podcast and we were like, Hey, we're always talking the about theology and we're always sharing, you know, where we are and, 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 and we spend hours just drinking coffee uh, sometimes whiskey and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, just talking theology. So we were like, how about we just, you know, name the podcast, um, Coramdeo because, you know, that way our, all our conversations can be resumed and like, um, us as sim you know, two ordinary guys living before the, the face and under the authority of God, you know, and Amen. how that looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. And when we are talking about, um, theology and all that stuff, and we wanted our audience to actually be, uh, have something that they can feel that they can um, approach, you know, without the necessity of like, man, I don't have a seminary degree. I don't have this or that, right? Um, can I even talk about theology, right, without having yeah. that? And, and I think it's just the simplicity of like, with seminary education or without seminary education, we're all called to live under the authority of God and before the face of God, right? So, Amen. Amen. Yeah. So simple, simple name. Now, um, I started out with with the name of my podcast. Now we talk about your name, name, name of your podcast. I tell you about the name of my church. Let me tell you how I came to Reform Theology, and and then you guys can share uh, your stories too. But we'll keep it brief because there's three of us. We don't want you know a 60 minute conversation of how we came to Reform <laughs> Faith, right? But me in prison, the last time I was in prison was when I when I when I truly had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. You know, that was that was my 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 Damascus Road experience, like 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 uh, Saul of Tarsus, right? Um, and and the last time I was in prison, I had almost three years to do, uh, and just completely devoted myself to the Word, to studying the Word. And I heard terms like Reform, Presbyterianism, Calvinism, Methodist, Free Methodist, you know, like all these names. And I was like, man, can, can we just be Christians, you know? <laughs> but when I got out of prison, uh, God's sovereignty, I through Celebrate Recovery, uh, I was really I'm, I've been in recovery, so I. That was one of the things that God used to help draw me in and help me, you know, deal with all my, 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 my baggage and my wreckage from the past. So he led me to a church that was a reformed church. It's the church that I was at before we planted this church. You know, I was there for seven years, uh, Emmanuel Reformed Church in Paramount. And I was like, well, what does reform mean? If I'm going to be at this church, I need to know what reform means. So I started studying, you know, doing my own little research on it. I'm like, well, that's just biblical. Why does it need a specific name, you know? And then I started like, yeah, this is dope. The sovereignty of God, the five solos. I went through my little cage stage and the whole, the whole shebang. And then I saw them baptize a baby one day and I lost my stuff, bro. The whole Roman Catholic background came out of me and, and I started studying even more and I started studying even more and I started studying even more. And after a while, like my head, you know, the logic clicks in and, and, and everything starts to come together. And, and even though, all the, all, all the dots started to connect in my mind, you know, it took a while for it to actually, for my heart to embrace it because of my Roman Catholic background. Yeah. And, and now bro, like that's, that's, that's one of the drums that I just bang on all the time. Baptize your babies because it's, it's beautiful. You know, God, God's covenant, not just to his people, but to his people's babies. You know what I'm saying? And seeing how that all unfolded from the old Testament and how it continues 
in the New Testament with the new administration from circumcision to baptism and how our children are always included in the visible Christ confessing covenant community. I stole that by R. Scott Clark, R. Scott Clark by the way. Christ confessing covenant community. In other words, the visible church, right? Um, and, and that's just, and, and I've, I've delved into it. I went to, you know, I got my bachelor's and my master's and now I'm on my doctorate. And I just, I can't get enough of it to be able to truly understand how good God is by leaning into his word and, and calling him on his promises to us, you know, and knowing that those are for my, myself and for my children. Yeah. How about you guys? What year, before, before we continue, what year were you uh, ordained, Pastor Rudy? I was ordained last year. No. Oh, yeah, man. last year. So it's been about a year, about a year and a half now that I got ordained. So you understand, you're talking to somebody. I have, I have been out of prison now ten years and two months. Mm-hmm. And the moment I got out of prison, I hit, I hit the, 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 the road running, bro. And I went to school to become a substance abuse counselor, then a mental health technician, then I started going for my bachelor's. And in my final year of my bachelor's, I got called into vocational ministry, and um, I started going to the seminary. I'm like, if I'm going to do this for the Lord. I got to make sure that it's just not my best thinking because my best thinking always got me in trouble in the past. So me quiero preparar as best as I possibly can because he deserves nothing less than my best, you know? That's good. And, and now I'm on my doctorate. So in Spanish, in Espanol. Yeah. El, 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 el pastor latino como teólogo, correct? El pastor, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, el pastor te, teólogo latino para una iglesia yeah. más eficaz, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's How good. about you guys? Um... I want to yeah, hear Louis because da- Danny's a big star. I want to hear Danny's. I want to like yeah. spotlight Danny's, you know? <laughs> so for myself, um, uh, I grew up in a Pentecostal church uh, and uh, I was a big reader. And what I was reading was stuff like, uh, this is probably going to make you guys cringe, like um, stuff like uh, Billy Graham, which isn't really Pentecostal, but he's really big in the Pentecostal community. Uh, um but I was even reading stuff from like Benny Hinn, um, you know, some of those like. <laughs> right. we, were, we were all there, bro. Bro, yeah. bro. When, when my wife, when, when she found out that I, that I, when she started to suspect that I was really a Christian, didn't mean to cut you off, Lisa, but just to, to mm-hmm. amen, amen what you're saying. Um, when, when she wanted to see if I was really a Christian, she sent me some books. And I'll never forget one of the books she sent me was from Benny Hinn. And it was Good Morning, Holy Spirit. When was the S Espiritu Santo? <laughs> Yep. And I read that book and I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever, bro. As a new Christian, <laughs> it was like, when you're driving your car, just look over to the empty seat and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And I was like, what the hell is this? Is this <laughs> but yeah, that, that's like, that's like a perfect example is I, I started reading that and I, I, I began to think like, there's got to be more to the Christian religion than this. You know, there, there's, that's not what I see in scripture. Um, so I, my reading list began to morph, um, and I, I, I came into this, like, kind of realm of, like, the young, restless, and reformed, right, with, like, Piper and, uh, who's that guy, McLaren or whatever his name is, um, Chandler, and, and, yeah, and I, and Mark Driscoll, and I, like, befriended a CRC pastor by the name of Philip Leo, and, you know, I was in my cage stage and just talking about the five points all the time, and uh, he actually gifted me a book that kind of changed everything. I actually had it right next to me. I don't know if you guys can see it. Letters oh, yeah, to yeah, a Young Calvinist. Reform. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So he gave me this book uh, as an invitation to the Reformed tradition. And he, yeah, what he basically told me is he said, the doctrines of grace is beautiful, but the Reformed tradition is so much more than that. And it, oh, yeah. all of it is equally beautiful. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, it was uh, kind of a, in a concise way that uh, conversations with Pastor Philip Leo from Oak Lawn uh, Calvin Christian Reform Church uh, was the one that was instrumental in kind of helping me out. So, Amen. And how about you, Danielito? <laughs> Tell us about your story. Yeah, um, <laughs> I uh, as well, I grew up in a semi- and- I grew up in a semi-Pentecostal evangelical church in Puerto Rico before moving to Chicago seven years ago. And then um, uh, moving to, when I moved to Chicago, I started attending uh, City Lights Church. And at that time, City Lights uh, was, I think, three years until three, three years or so, maybe 
I could be corrected later, but three years or so into um, Calvinism. Uh, oh. So learning about Calvinism there, you know, uh, uh, was like, uh, 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 and so, and mainly, mainly soteriology, right? You know, about salvation and how it works yeah. and how it's applied. Uh, that opened my eyes and like Louis, um, for me at least was all Piper. I was, I was eating, uh, Piper for breakfast, lunch and, and, and dinner. Right. And, um, and just listening to Piper and that, um, drove me to, it's funny. We all said it <laughs> to, the, to the cage stage. Uh, right. I, I wanted to like everyone, you know, learn Calvinism, learn the five points. Like, are you even a Christian if you yeah. don't know the five points? Right. How um, dare you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there's no such thing as a four point Calvinist, which is true. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, don't hurt anybody then. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but that was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything more than that. Right. That was the new thing. And that was like, man, like, how can I never heard anything about this? So, but I didn't, I didn't know anything more. I didn't know what covenant theology was or anything like yeah. that. So that, um, um, like you, because I have a lot of family in the Roman Catholic Church, uh, I only associated uh, infant baptism with uh, the Roman Catholic background, right? Like, um, so to see uh, Christians in our side of our camp baptizing kids, for me, was like a no-no, right? Like, it was like, no, man, you guys got it wrong. You guys don't understand um, the way of baptism, right? Like you're missing the, you're missing the mark. Fast forward to, uh, uh meeting, meeting, uh, um, Louis before I met pastor, <laughs> pastor Rev Rubio, uh, Louis was already in the, in the PCA. So we already had conversation and my mission in life was to, uh, bring Louis to the Baptist side and like, it was like, man, you got, you're missing the mark. You know, you're not seeing it. Um, but Rudy was, I mean, but Louis was a, a, a gentle uh, friend who, who still kept me around just so that, you know, and pray for me. Yeah. But then fast forward, I met you about, I want to say, man, it's been what, two years, right? Yeah, we met oh. in Chicago. I mean, we met online, but then it's like, where'd you meet him? On the internet. Yeah. Oh, we're, <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> You were but here you, for you were here yeah. for for something related to the RCA. Yeah, I was there for some denominational business, and yeah. I connect I connected with a bunch of homies. You guys took me out, and yeah. I'll never forget, Louis. There, what was the name of that pizza joint that you guys took me to? Pequods. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and I said, "All right, y'all." It was like what six or seven of us. Yeah. Something Jonathan like Reyes was yeah, there. Jo right jo away. Jonathan Reyes. Who was there? Jonathan Reyes. Elliot. Uh, uh, Sanford that, that, that I haven't yeah. just in case he's watching this that was the last time I saw Sanford I haven't seen him in person really that, yeah man <laughs> so yeah uh, John, Jonathan was there because afterwards Edwin Lada Ramirez and myself and him we actually went to Moody Institute uh Moody Bible Institute and we recorded a podcast there but yeah. but who but what was it what was the other brother's name he's a preacher too um yeah, yeah so there was like six, six or seven of us and Louis I said look we're gonna go in here this is what's gonna happen y'all we finna talk about baptism there's six of you guys and there's one of me all right either we gonna walk out y'all gonna be baptizing babies or i'm gonna walk out with a black eye but we gonna talk about that and, and we kind of did huh yeah, hmm. we did um and but the big takeaway for for me at least from that conversation is that it pushed me i think a couple of like probably like a month or two after that i, I gave you a call and i told you <laughs> sanford shout out to sanford who's watching this right now um, hey, John, Jonathan said Rudy went to Chicago to convert Baptists into Presby's. <laughs> <laughs> I did, bro, wherever I go. <laughs> so, like, I think a month or two after that, I gave you a call and I, and I told you, hey, Rudy, um, um, I, I really want to get into studying uh, and understanding covenant theology uh because i don't know anything about it and i'm just i'm just against it because of my tradition of what yeah. i know right and uh and you pointed me to uh, i got the book right here just in case somebody wants to uh, go ahead and read it you pointed me to the the promise of baptism an introduction to baptism in scripture and the reformed tradition 
yeah. by James. Yeah, I, you, you don't have to say his name. You don't yeah, have to say his yeah, name. But, okay. Yeah, but the but the but the, the book yeah. itself is good. Yeah. So that book, I took it and I read it and I studied it and I alongside our our Scott Clark's uh, um, series on um, I will be a God to you and to your children. To your children, yeah. And uh, man, like, that, was, that was like a that was like a 14, 15 part series, right? 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15, yeah, 15 and and not short episodes. I'm gonna tell yeah, you that. No. But but so good, but really good episodes. And I I did that while while also studying um on the Baptist perspective side, you yeah. know, and prayerfully and and in conversation with you and with other brothers, you know, just just really uh, uh trying to understand. And at the end of it, man, like I came out, I came out uh um a reformed brother, a, a, a full, complete reformed brother, uh, mm -hmm. seeing the beauty of the of continuity and the and the covenant, the covenant of grace, and and uh, um, and I I say that because I just baptized my 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 daughter uh, about mm -hmm. probably three months ago, I think. Praise so, God! Praise God! So that that was it, man. And now I just keep studying and I keep growing, like anybody else and just deeping, you know, keep, keep going deep into, uh, covenant theology and, uh, Amen. the reform, reform faith, you know? So let, let me, let me, so let me share with some of the things that we're, that we got going on right now, where I think we're going. And I'd love for you guys to share, like, what does your future hold? What are you guys thinking as far as ministry? What are your next steps? You know, not that the podcast is nothing wrong with it, but I'm, I'm yeah. sure you guys have, you know, your eyes set on, on much higher ministry goals, uh, to, to really, uh, the other day I was talking to uh, our buddy Alex Diaz. Uh, oh yeah, Ramon Rivera. Jonathan Reyes said Ramon Rivera. That's him, Ramon Rivera, bro. How can I forget? Um, oh yeah, Ramon. Oh my God, Ramon. Ramon yeah. I'm sorry, bro. Forget, you're forgive my us, boy. Bro. <laughs> all, hey, all of a sudden, Louis, you my boy. You my boy. <laughs> <laughs> good looking. Hey, good, 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 look, good looking out, Jonathan. Good looking out. And Jonathan's in Raleigh, North Carolina, by the way. Hmm. Um. So so, yeah. I was telling Alex Diaz que, que debemos ser como un trapo, bro. Empapado, exprimido to get every last drop out of us for the Lord. You know what I mean? When it comes to ministry. Yeah. And um, so, so where we're at right now, we planted Reformed Church. My boy Chris Marquez and I planted Reformed Church LA um, two and a half years ago. It'll be three years on March 25th. So it's, it's almost three years, like two and three quarter years that we officially launched it. And right now we are getting ready to launch Reformed Church of LA Wilmington. Right, which is in the hood in the harbor area. Uh, our homies from Reform Raza, shout out to the fellows from Reform Raza podcast, Martin Velasquez, Justin Mar uh, Corona, and Victor Velasquez. They have now become members at RCLA. They are being trained uh, through Keller's Redeemer City to City mm -hmm. uh, for their for church planting. They will become uh, elders at our church, and then they will be commissioned uh, and licensed to plant Reform Church Orange County. Nice. And at the same time, shout out to the homie Sam Oxymoron. If you guys don't know him, follow him. He's a dope Christian hip hop artist. And David Cabrera, they will be um, also planting a church through us at Reform Church, i.e. Reform Church of the Internet Empire in San Bernardino, in the hood in San Bernardino. Um, so, man, doing a lot of things, bro. We're getting ready also to open up a business. We're going to open up uh, a tea house, Bava Urban Tea Parlor here in the city of Linwood, hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days in order to create a consistent stream of revenue because there's just no money in the hood, bro. And we're not going to let that be uh, a, a stumbling block or a hindrance for us stopping. So we got to, we got to get hood creative and use our hood mentality yeah. to be able to figure out ways to legally make money to fund the ministry. You know, yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at right now. Sanford's talking smack. They find it show. <laughs> um, but but what's up with you guys? What's up with you, Louis? What's up with you, Daniel? What does the future hold for, with you guys? Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Go ahead, Louis. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, just continuing my studies. Um, as uh, I have uh, about a couple more uh, semesters for undergrad, and then um, simultaneously getting my MDiv through um, something called City Seminary, which is affiliated with Lamb Theological Seminary. Um, Which belongs to the PCA, right? It's affiliated with the PCA. Yeah. So, uh, so just going through that, um, but that's kind of the that's that's the the long route. But down down the pike, um, um, and something me and Danny are both looking at together is looking for uh, licensure in uh, the PCA church. 
Awesome. Oh, yeah. How about you, Danny? Feel free to say as much as you'd like to or able to. Yeah. Uh, uh, likewise. Um, uh, my, the goal is right now to continue with my education. I transfer from an MA to an MDiv. Um, and just finish the MDiv and pursue ordination. Um, hopefully, hopefully the, the next step, the closer step right now is to, like Louis said, pursue um, our licensure, and our, pre our preaching licensure with the PCA. And then from that, uh, hopefully um, pursue ordination once obtained, uh, the, we obtained, I obtained my MDiv. Uh, but you know what? I, I, I hold everything with, a, with an open hand and, and I, um, I pray that the Lord may lead us well, and he will, uh, into what he has in, in store for us. And, th and I say that because, um, um, uh, Louis doesn't know this yet, <laughs> but recently a brother reached out to me recently as, as, as recent as yesterday and, uh, talking to me about, um, talking to me about <laughs> church plan. I'm not going to mention names or anything. <laughs> um, uh, I, I am, Louis, I am going to have this conversation with you, brother. <laughs> Louis, like, you never even told me, fool. Like, what's up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, um, um, I, I, it's something, you know, to consider and pray about and, and see where, where the Lord leads and where he, you know, if he, if he has us to do that or, or not. And I say, do that, uh, has us, me and my wife, right? Um, and Louis, if he jumps in uh, to do that, <laughs> but um, it's something to pray about and to just you know talk and 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 that beautiful stage of dreaming together of the possibilities of what you know God can do through uh, a yeah. ministry like that if, if it ever comes to happen. Um, but besides that, man, the main the main goal right now is finish school uh, with the podcast. With the, serve serve as best as we can. Uh, Louis is a Louis is a he's a um, resident. That's what you call it, right? Yeah, a uh, resident pastor. Yeah. So. Like an intern. Yeah. So I would um, like to to be able to come into uh, undercare, you know, undercare with the PCA uh, once I make my, my time in membership, and then and um. The goal is just, you know, to just get those licensures and uh, uh, ordinations uh, 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 done. Yeah, um, yeah. And in the meantime, man, just like I said, serve as best as we can in our in our local church, you know, in our local community. And then when it comes to the podcast, uh, our our goal starting 2020 for Corandeo would be... Wait, wait, 2021. Forget about, 20, forget, forget, man, about, yeah. forget about 2020, bro. It's, it's, it's in the it's a wrap. It's over with. It's just, it feels eternal, man. <laughs> yeah, 2020 yeah. feels like it's hey, never like ending. We, <laughs> like, we say in, like we say in Mexico, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the goal for Corandeo in 2021 would be we're going to start going through the Westminster Confession of Faith. Amen. Um, so that's going to give us enough, you know, uh, um, material to just... Yep, that's exactly what we're using. That's it. We're, that's we're gonna be we're using, using. We're gonna be using his book. Um, so Arsis Pro Exposition of the Westminster. That's our 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 next chapter in Coramdeo. So that will give yeah. us more more time to be able to do stuff like this. You know, uh, do interviews on the spot or whatnot. You know, and then just have a solid material going out from uh, Coramdeo. That's the, yeah. that's the plan for Coramdeo. The homie Jonathan uh, Jonathan Reyes says that he would highly encourage. Or suggest to get into a residency first before planting get a bit of vocational experience under your belts and I, I totally agree and I think you guys I think he made that comment before you finished explaining what what your specific roles were right now right yeah but yeah definitely definitely um, by me being on staff at a, at a very large I mean almost almost mega church ish you know where I was at before I was able to experience a lot of this stuff and and uh, with the filter I took all the good that we could apply contextualize the rest because we're in two different neighborhoods and, um, and and do everything for God's glory. But tell me about your church. I'll tell you about my church and I want to hear about, because you guys are at the same church, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you can tell me about that church. So we are in the city of Linwood, right? Linwood is in South LA. We have Compton on one side. We have Watts on the other. Um, it's, it's the hood, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there's too many churches that had solid 
biblical foundation, solid theology that ended up leaving during white flight. And they just left it. It was like, it was like hunting season for the wolves to come in. All the prosperity preachers, all the, yeah. you know, Dios bendiga a todos los hermanos that think they're on the right page, but they're not, they've never just really said, they've got a lot of, a lot of zeal, a lot of passion, but no, no knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was just like open terrain for people to come in and just like, ah, you know, all them prosperity fools, both black and brown. Um, so there's not, when we start talking about stuff, like uh, one of the our, one of our beloved families that was a part of our core team when we launched, they came from a more charismatic, prosperity-ish type, you know, Christian background. Well, just background. I don't want to say Christian. And um, and when we started talking about like the sovereignty of God and the solas and getting into, you know, uh, systematic theology, they were like, hey, is this a cult? Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, you can like, I promise you, this is the last thing that that's a cult, you know? Um but we're in an area where you talk about the sovereignty of God and people just like, you know, you, uh, um, it's like postmodern, post-Christian. But at the same time, there's people that are hungry, bro, hungry to really understand the word of God because nobody's ever taken the time to teach it to them. It's just my abuela Concha believed this or my tia Cuca believed that. And we got to fall in line because if not, como vas a hacer una aleluya? you know what I mean? Like, like we just go along with a Roman Catholic culture. Uh, we don't really know why we do things. We just do them. Um, and when I start to ask questions, people are like, I don't know. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. Let, let me tell you what the word of God says. So that, that's kind of the context where we're at now. Linwood is like 90 plus percent, not just Latino, but Mexican, you know, uh, and then Compton and Watts, I think are each at about 65 to 75 percent Mexican as well. You know, a uh, very small percentage of, of African-Americans in Compton and Watts, now much less in, in Linwood. Um, but you know, we're a reformed church. We are, are currently associated with the reformed church in America. We are also, uh, affiliated with Acts 29. Um, and we got a bunch of friends all over the place, you know, like you guys that, um, like the other day Sanford called me up, bro. And he just like, Hey, Pai, you got a minute. And we just like FaceTimed each other for like, I want to say like 45 minutes. And it was either. And I think the following day, Danny's like, Hey, Rev, you got a minute. I'm like, yeah, we were on the phone again, like for like maybe 45 minutes, an hour or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope to have friends and networks and connections all over the place. But tell me about uh, the Boulevard. Yeah, so uh, Boulevard uh, Presbyterian Church is a church in the Chicago Metro Presbytery uh, for the PCA Church. Um, and we're uh, located in Oak Park, Illinois. Um, and uh, our parish, though, is in Oak Park uh, and Austin and the Austin area, which is... Um, uh, it's two neighborhoods that couldn't be completely opposite from one another. Oak Alive. Park is more, yeah, Oak Park is more white and affluent. Um, and um, Austin is more African-American and, and more on the uh, poverty side uh, of things. And uh, all the interactions between those two communities are always negative. Um, and when we sought to plant a church back in 2017, um, we were looking at that and seeing how can we uh, how can we see uh, not only the residents in those two areas reconciled with Christ, um, but also in the midst of that being reconciled with one another. Um, so that's been kind of the yeah the challenge that we've been going through. Church planning is hard, but when you do it um, with racial reconciliation in the midst as well, and yeah, <laughs> but it even harder canopy on it too so a hey, question for you guys what is the what is the ethnic or cultural demographic of the boulevard yeah right uh right now it's uh predominantly um caucasian um except this uh, guy right now okay yeah <laughs> pero pareces, pero pareces. but not when we i talk though. bro <laughs> yeah um yeah but um uh that too that's what we're we're kind of uh wrestling with now and seeing um as we're uh looking to prayerfully um buy buy a church a uh, building of our own and where we place that church or where we find that church is going to um also sway the demographics a little bit too or at least that's the that's the fear so um uh, so the, the, majority, I mean, the, the majority of your church leadership is anglo yeah okay. um Myself, I'm I'm uh, biracial, and then we have uh, someone else who is biracial on staff and uh, an African American 
on staff as well. But other than that, the majority is, yeah. Yeah, because for us, we're a multicultural church, but in our multicultural culturalness, whatever that word, whatever, yeah, <laughs> being, being, being multicultural, um, even though we're predominantly Latino, right, we have, you know, two beautiful Samoan families, we have a couple of African American families, a couple of Filipino families, you know, what I mean, uh, I think the, the last white family in Linwood also comes to our church, and there's a couple of mixed families, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's beautiful, bro, like this last Sunday, um, we usually try to incorporate one song that's that's Spanglish or in Spanish, you know. Uh, a veces que Marco Sweet, or you know what I mean, or un, un este, um, como se llama, what's this dude's name? Uh, Jesus Adrian Romero, you know what I mean? Um, but we, our worship leaders, a beautiful Samoan family, they sang in a Polynesian language, Maori from New Zealand, nice. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we sang How Great Thou Art in English and in Maori, you know what I mean? I hope I'm saying that right, forgive mm -hmm. me if I'm not. Uh, but yeah, we, 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 we are in, and, and I asked about that because that's something that, and I don't want to take too much more time. We've already been on for almost 40 minutes, but um, I want to know, what is it like for you guys being most reform circles that we navigate in are Anglo, the majority Anglos or Anglo driven with very few people of color uh, or ethnic minorities in at the table, let alone in, in leadership roles. Um, that's been something like I, I'm in the reform church. In the Amer of America, the Reformed Church in America, 393 year olds, you know, 393 year old denomination. Uh, it's been here longer than the United States, you know. We're talking like gangs in New York, you know what I mean? And um, so it's predominantly Dutch, Dutch Reformed, you know, and um, they're starting to become more and more Latinos. Uh, they're starting to be more uh, people of ethnic minority at the table and with voices. Uh, I had one of the loudest voices when, you know, I was going to Chicago for this this 2020 vision team I was on, we were trying to determine the best way forward for the denomination because it's come to a crossroads where it's, it's probably gonna end up splitting or breaking off. Um, but you look at like the, the URC, it's predominantly Anglo. You look at the OPC, it's predominantly Anglo. Uh, what is the, P I think the PCA is a little bit more diverse, right? I think, yeah, so. I, 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 yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, Danny. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good, man. You're good. You know more about the PCA than I, than, than I do. You've been longer there, but yeah. I think it has its pockets. Like different presbyteries look differently, but as it pertains to the uh, Chicago Metro Presbytery, um, there is a little bit more diversity, but I think that's just in every big city uh, for the PCA church. Um, but um, I do have a good amount of friends uh, specifically um yeah that are minorities that that specifically also say it's it's tough and they they feel that strain as well um uh as as do i too as being bi biracial and and i'm sure that's something that even even danny as a um right now a member of a pca church um might resonate with that as well so <laughs> yeah, yeah i think uh um for me like um just real quick um, yeah, it's, I, I, well, I come from Puerto Rico where everyone in the church was nothing but Puerto Rico. They were all, all Puerto Rican, you know? So just coming to Chicago itself, you know, and, um, and just changing the whole language. Right. Uh, so it's, it's been a, a new experience, but being at the PCA, um, like Louis said, and more specifically, um, following along the lines that you just mentioned, I think the goal is not to take away for, for at least my, the goal in my head and what I see and, I, and my hope is it's not to take away from our, from, from our, our white brothers and sisters, right? Like uh, in the reform community, but to um, open the doors for our Latino and minority communities to see and understand the, beauty, the, the beauty of reform theology and, and I, you know, for me, at least being in the, at, at, a, at a Boulevard, it's an expression of like, hey, we're Latinos, we're like we're Boricua. We don't, it doesn't get more Boricua than me and my wife, right, right here. So, and like, and we love the Lord uh, uh, through this reform uh, uh, understanding. And our hope is to bring more people into this as well, right? Like, um, yeah. 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 Amen. So I, I don't want to, I don't want I don't want to just be at the table, bro. Yeah. I want to have, I want to have a plate in front of me. 
Yes. I want to be able to ask for more salsa. I want to be able to ask for more <laughs> soda, like more drink. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I don't want to just be at the table. I want to create a path so that our people aren't just there, but that they have a voice and a vote, you know, that our perspective is considered and everything going forward. Like shout out to Martin Velasquez from, um, from Reformed Raza podcast. He just jumped on. Um, but you know what though? Um, people like Martin, people like myself, people like you guys, um, we can't just walk into a predominantly reformed or Presbyterian church and expect the church to, you know, change the way it's done things to accommodate us, you know, like mm -hmm. that, 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 those are unrealistic expectations too. Shout out to the homie Alex Diaz who finally got on here. Right. <laughs> hey, he said, he said, love that Grimke sweatshirt. Just so you guys know, I go to Western Theological Seminary in Hall of Michigan, but I support my homies at Grimke. And this, this hoodie was gifted to me by Alex Diaz. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the things I want to do, one of the things that I think my calling is, is not just to, to plant a church that will, you know, to plant a healthy confessionally reformed church that will plant other healthy confessionally reformed churches. But I want to be able to create a path to make a way for people like me and us at the table. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, hey, it's not just me, bro. I got like 50 fools behind me that are in seminary, that are, are residencies, or they're getting life, you know, going through the licensure to preach and, and watch out because these fools are coming. Like, like they're yeah. coming, like, like, abren camino, you know, like, like we got to be able to come in and speak into these issues. Why? Because people like us are going to be able to plant churches and reach the people in communities where we come from, because there are no solid reformed or Presbyterian churches in those hoods. Yeah. Period. You know? Yeah. That's good. Uh, I agree, man. And like, even, even, and this is probably not within the same, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, route, but even like, thinking about places like Puerto Rico, right? Like even like, you know, taking that opportunity to, like you said, not being someone who's at the party, but someone who's at the table, right? Like, and even taking that to like places like, um, you know, Puerto Rico, like, which I love and like uh, uh, being able to like uh, uh, give that to, to my people, right? And uh, uh, to be at the table as well uh, and to join and form part of that. Uh, but like here in the States as well, man, in Chicago, I think that's, uh, there's a, there's a great opportunity to, to do that. And that there is, there's, there's people like you said that I know, and Louie knows that are in seminary or, 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 or have this education and, and they need to be at the table, uh, yeah. making a reformation. <laughs> hey bro, they, they, there's a, there's a thing called the second Dutch reformation. I don't see why there can be like a, a first Latino reformation. You know what I'm saying? Because you got fools like 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 Jonathan like Jonathan uh, Gonzalez in, in Reno. I'm trying to get him to come to LA, but Aldo Leon is is gunning hard for him to go to Miami. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but that's cool. We got Sanford. Uh, Pi is trying to hide and he's trying to shuck and dive his obvious calling. But we're gonna be talking to him pretty soon. You know, uh, Alex Diaz is gonna be. Um, I'll save that for later. I don't want to. I don't want to put him on blast. But we're also having conversations about a whole bunch of stuff. Like there's there's so many Latino homies that I know that are doing stuff. Um, like I'm gonna be sitting down. Hopefully, you, you guys know Adriel Sanchez. I've heard of him. I've heard his podcast. Yeah. Yeah, Adriel Sanchez does core Christianity. He does the White Horse Sin. Um, yeah. And we're gonna be we're gonna be connecting hopefully soon in the next week or two. Uh, I want to inter I want to interview him. Like, bro, there just ain't that many Latinos um, that that know what they're talking about. That that have any kind of platform to be able to to speak, you know what I mean? And create some kind of audience. So yeah. I don't know. That's, that's one of the many things that I think God has called me to do. And I want to be able to do that. So I'm, I'm grateful to be able to hang out with my brothers from Coram Deo or Coram Deo. Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and just hear your heart, where you're at, what God has done, how you've come to faith and, and where you're going. Uh, and know that you always have a brother, a friend in LA uh, willing to, to take a call, take a FaceTime, hang out, chop it up, give you my insight and, and any kind yeah. of counsel that, that may be of help, you know? Yeah, yeah, we appreciate that, Rev. Um, um, and uh, and likewise, man, you have a place you have a place to to stay at in Chicago. Uh, your your counsel and your leadership is appreciated. I'm I'm really grateful that Louis uh, jumped in now, and you guys got to know each other as well. So um, it's all about connecting to one another, right? And 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 staying strong. But uh, um, yeah, man. Um, I was gonna say, shout out to. Redeem Project Radio, though. Redeem yeah, Project, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Redeem Project Radio. I think you're you're there, right? Your 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 podcast is playing there. Right. Um, 
I don't Is know it? if my pod, I think they had one one or two of my sermons on there through Jonathan Gonzalez. Is um, what is it? Uh, con sazon. Sa uh, sazon? The work. The work on sazon. Well, the work on sazon. Yeah, the work yeah. on sazon. Yeah. Man, Jonathan Gonzalez is a pioneer. Man, building yeah, yeah, building yeah. things. Um, yeah. But shout out to uh, um, Redeem Project Radio. If you guys want to listen to more content like this, Redeem Project Radio is the place to go to. That's Redeem Redeem Project Radio dot com. We're and there. tell tell us who's on there. Like who who started? Who's involved with Redeem Project Redeem Project Radio? Uh, I know uh, for Christ in Cultura is there. You're gonna listen uh, there uh, to uh, your 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 reform rappers. Not your not your not your uh, uh, um, uh, your one one six. Not talking about truth, but using one one six of <laughs> rappers. But you got there uh, regenerate. You got uh, um, doctrinal. You got doctrinal. You also got uh, for Christ in Cultura is there, yeah. so you can listen to their stuff there too. Reform Rasa, Reform, Reform Rasa, Rasa there, yeah. yeah. So you can listen to stuff from Reform Rasa. Uh, oh man, let me, let me say that back. You can listen stuff from Reform Rasa. Rasa, Rasa, not Rasa. That's not that? that? that's yeah. not a hella, that's yeah. not a hella Anglo, bro. <laughs> yeah, Reform <laughs> Rasa, and um, um, you can listen to many other <laughs> many other stuff that I play in there. I'm like, dang, uh, bro, how you say it in Puerto Rico, bro? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> hey, hey. We've been colonized by Estados Unidos, you know, taking over us and, you know, doing this Spanglish stuff to us. Oye, bro, uh, ¿qué te pasa, man? <laughs> but, um, Alex Diaz, man, you keep, you keep, <laughs> um, but yeah, you can listen to good stuff there at uh, Reform Project Radio. And nothing, Rudy, man, we appreciate the opportunity to do this crossover two for one. Yeah, um, we, we got a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions? So Michael Crispo said, uh, he asked, and feel free to jump in, guys. Um, how can the Reformed Church better contextualize in order to reach different ethnic groups? L let me know what you guys think about that, and I'll just be happy to share what we've actually done here in Linwood. Can you, can you, wait, what was the question again? I was looking at the, the comments. You fool, you weren't even paying attention to me, bro. <laughs> He said, how, how can the Reformed Church better contextualize in order to reach different ethnic groups? Let me tell you what we've done, Michael. Um, we, uh, the, the, the worship music that we play, right? Like, like we believe in RPW, but we try not to be so dogmatic about it to where it's just dry and bland. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we actually raise our hands. We lift our hands. You'll see people with tears in their eyes during worship. Uh, I raise my voice. I use words like I'm using right now. I don't, you know, like, I guess, brother, uh, open up to the gospel of like, you know what I mean? Like, we're just, we're, we're hood, bro. And, and we try to reach the hood by just being who we are. You know what I mean? Um, I'm a chameleon. We're chameleons where we adapt to our environment to be able to, to reach the more. Um, but we try to bring high church to the hood. We're yeah. covenantal, we're confessional. Uh, we go through a catechism uh, uh, every single every single Lord's Day. Uh, we go through the Apostles' Creed. There's a call to worship, a confession, and, and an assurance of pardon. Like, like, we do the whole thing. We close off with the doxology a cappella. Like, we're just who we are. Our theology comes out of who we are the way we are, right? We don't try to be a PCA church, an OPC church. We just, we are who we are. We're Latino, we're, we're black, we're, we're Polynesian, and, and that's what they get. And, and I think people coming to us because of that and understanding the message and being able to relate makes a world of difference in how we contextualize. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah I would, I mean, I would agree with, with that. And, and that's what we've, uh, we've uh, been doing also at, at Boulevard uh, is, um, making sure with the songs we sing uh, and specifically with the traditions, um, we sing a lot of uh, rich old gospel tunes um, that, uh, that I think is helpful. Um, but also to just um, creating what we do is what, one of my favorite things we do is it's, it's called like a round table uh, where we come together with the reading material or something like that. Like every um, MLK day we read, something uh like an old sermon from ML, from martin luther king jr or something and uh dissect it as a group 
or we'll read, uh, I think this past MLK Day um, or during Black History Month, we read um, uh, When Justice Rolls Down. Um, yeah. um, and so just, just finding opportunity. I think I love what you said. Like, you don't just want to seat at the table. You want a plate as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's making sure that, especially um, uh, Michael Crespo, um, um, I think I know you from Emmanuel Bible Church, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, close friends with, uh, with uh, a family that I, I hold near and dear to my heart, uh, my girlfriend Alyssa and her family. Uh, but um, being able to create those opportunities for you to, um, um, like just as what makes it easier to be a person sitting at the table with the plate in front of them is when the host gets to serve them that. Right. Uh, and I think uh, the pastor or the eldership or stuff like that, um, um, I think needs to be conscious and knowing, OK, I have um, I have a, a multitude of people here and, and all of them deserve a plate. All of them deserve a cup um, and all of them deserve to be saved. Amen. Amen. So one of the things like, say, for instance, here's a perfect example, right, for our Advent uh, season, right, in, in this month of December, um, it's called truth, timetables, y tradiciones. You know, I don't know if you guys can, no, you can't see it, no, uh, but, but, but it, it's truth, timetables, y tradiciones. And we're going to talk about ponche and we're going to talk about posadas and how our culture, you, you know what I mean? Like, like use that to connect, but the message stays the same. Yeah. Like, like we don't, we don't dilute it. We don't change it. We don't twist it. Um, from Jonathan Gonzalez and, uh, and, and Martin Velasquez, they got that. They, I don't know who said it first or what, but they said it. They said we don't twist. We, we twist churros. We don't twist scripture, right? And and I and I, and I use that all. The, I use that all the time in my sermons now. Like like I I don't take credit for it, but I use that all the time in my sermons. I'm like, yo, we don't twist. We don't twist scripture. We twist churros. We don't twist scripture. You know, um, and, and we just let who we are come out. You know, like our theology goes from our head to our heart to our hands, and it just. It comes out as, as us, you know. Yeah. So we, yeah. We're, we're not we're not we're not in a box to where we do things like this, this, and this. We do those same things. We just do them as who we are, you know. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and people and people connect with us on, on on those lines. So I hope I I hope we answered your question, Michael. Uh, if anybody else has a, a question uh, before we we close out, that'd be that'd be dope. Or is there something you guys want to mention before we end, Daniel or Louis? I just want to give a shout out to our pastor Jeff, who's uh, watching the video, and to uh, uh, he watched. Did he watch the whole thing to hear to hear what you said about I'm him? I'm not did sure he if he's been here the whole the whole time, but I just noticed uh, he's he's there. And then uh, also to the Myron, who's uh, he's also an intern, right? An intern pastor of the PCA. Yeah, I think he might be an associate or assistant pastor. Um, I'm not sure, or I think no, he's in training as well. I think he yeah. might be getting mad at me, saying, "Man, why are you calling me a pastor when I'm not that yet, bro? Come on." <laughs> So the Myron yeah. is there. It's a it's a dude that we would love also to, and I would love also to connect him to you, have a conversation. He's a, an African American brother, so he he will probably have a lot to say about you know not only sitting at the table but also uh, uh, having a plate at the table. So amen, yeah. amen, amen, amen. Uh, Twist shoot is not scripture. Yeah, yeah. So we said, but um, <laughs> yeah. What what plans do you guys have? Are you guys preaching at all soon? Not. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be preaching, um, uh, pastor Jeff, uh, shout out to my boy, Jeff, uh, I'm going to be <laughs> preaching, um, uh, this, uh, uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, we're, we're going through an Advent series, uh, entitled, uh, mothers of Christ, um, where we look at the women in, uh, Matthew's, uh, gospel genealogy, um, and on, the 24th of December, I get to uh, preach about uh, the Magnificat um, and Mary. So, Amen, amen. You preaching anytime soon, Daniel? Um, I was asked to be put in the schedule, but I, I asked, my, I, you know, I, I asked if, they, if I could first get to know the church and get to know the people. So it's coming soon. Um, but Louis started doing this... Uh, once a month, uh, leading worship for, for, for another church. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be the, the guest preacher for that once a month. So we just did it. Nice. When was it? Uh, uh, like, uh, was it a week ago? Last, yeah. Last, was it last Saturday? 
Yeah, last Saturday we we had that first uh, event. So that's gonna be once a month, uh, hopefully. Uh, and where Louis is gonna be leading worship, and I will be. Uh, wait, 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 wait till you're preaching every week, like nine, ten weeks straight, <laughs> when you're doing homework and 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 being a husband and being a wife and having a job on top of that while leading the church. Well, back hopefully, on, I will. Hopefully, I, hopefully, I will stick with being a husband and not being a wife. But. Um, um, yeah. But um yeah, I I I admire I admire people like you, um, Rudy and like Alex Diaz, um, who are in and out, man, like uh <laughs> in and out every Sunday, plus doing whatever you're doing in the week with the church, uh, plus still taking care of your family. So that's you know, that's uh I, I know that Louie and I are 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 looking forward to to have uh the council of you know people like you and other pastors like Jeff as well who who, who are gonna uh, lead us well to be able to do this as well as we jump into full time ministry? Amen, amen. Jonathan said, Jonathan Ray said, "Praise God for your humility, where you're trying to get to know the people, where you're aiming to know the people, not aiming for the stage. That's gold. That's fire right there, mm -hmm. right? Because some people, all they want, there was one, there was one dude, bro. I'm not gonna say his name, but we ended up excommunicating him from our church, anyways. The dude just wanted to be a pastor, like he wanted to lead, he wanted to teach." And it's like, yo, 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 like, slow down, bro. How about you learn how to serve first before you even try to lead? Um, and, and yeah, what, what Jonathan said is gold because um, dude ended up like, like, like just crashing what little bit of promise he showed. And it's like, we, we had to excommunicate him, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm hoping and praying that, that he would be restored and that he would repent and, 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 and get right, you know, with, with himself and with God. But that's just an, a perfect example when somebody's aiming for the stage and not aiming to know the people like the way I love the way he worded that that's that's gold. Yeah, yeah. Is that Adrian Adrian Banales? Yeah, Adrian uh, is a, a teacher at Linwood High School. He's a brother. He is becoming a member of our church and he will probably be going into an elder candidacy coming on this year, man. You know, nice. him and him and his family. We're really excited about them coming. Uh, to, as we plant other churches, um, we want to be smart about it and make sure that we can strengthen like the mother church to be able to help plant other church. And, and Adrian and his family are going to be a key role in, in helping us do just that. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me ask you this, uh, um, Rudy: is is the goal for um, RCLA is to just stay in RCLA, or are you guys open also to um, plant in, in other in other uh, states or whatnot? Bro, we could talk, homie. We could talk about the desert. <laughs> Alex, are you listening, bro? You know, we could talk about Arizona, Vegas, like, you know. Uh, no, bro, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not close to anything. However, we can help, however, we can be a blessing to take what what we've learned in these last three years, which has been a lot, you know, because we've read a lot of books on church planting, but none of it was contextualized to us. I think Doug Lowen's book mm -hmm. on the block. You know, but but even that it's it, it was like it's one book, you know, and so I'm yeah, anyways, all that to say that we're definitely open to it so we can talk about that, we can you know, we can chop it up uh offline and 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 uh and see how it to see solids, bro. You know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm just I'm just teasing Alex, just teasing Alex, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Vroom, Paul Room is a PCA pastor too. He said I have all the connections. I know you, Paul, so I must, man. Michael Crespo said RC Vegas has a nice ring to it. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Alex? <laughs> All right, fellas. If you guys don't have anything else, man, I know it's like really, really late where you guys are at because there's a there's a three hour time difference. So I'm really grateful that you guys would 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 um would would um you know accommodate me and my schedule to be able to do it at, at your time. Yeah, man. Uh, likewise, uh, Rudy, we appreciate it. So um, um, I hope this is not the, the this is not the only time we do this. You know? No, so, no, no, no. I'm laughing right now because I'm looking at the comments, bro. <laughs> Alex Diaz said, "Let's talk." Sanford said, "Leave my pastor alone." <laughs> Alex awesome. Sanford, if you only knew the other conversations we were having, bro, <laughs> you'd be scared. <laughs> hey, what's 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 um, what's his name? David? Is David his name? David Diaz, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how the conversation happened, bro. Like, I don't know what happened. And it was public, so it's not like I'm 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 saying anything like I'm I'm like I'm breaking confidentiality or anything. 
but he said something like on one of my posts, I think I had to do with, with you know, covenant theology, pedo baptism. And I said, are you pedo? And I don't really know the guy, you know what I mean? And he was like, oh, <laughs> said, I saw he said pedo or something. And I'm like, no, bro, like baptizing baby. <laughs> And he said, and he said, and he said, he said, no, I'm just like my, I'm just like my, my pastor, like my elders, uh, uh, um, which is, which is Alex and, and, and Elliot. Right. And I was like, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny, bro. That was funny. But and they go Sanford again, leave my pastors alone. <laughs> Come on by study your Alex, stuff. Al stuff. Alex is, Alex is convinced it's coming and I'm convinced too, Sanford. Sanford, bro. I think Rudy and I both know, both know, you know, you're, you're already in there, man. You already see it. You're there. You're with us. So yeah. stop running, man. We know where you are. I think the biggest problem, I think the biggest problem, I'm not picking on anybody in particular, just when you bang something so hard to change, it's like, oh man, I got to go back and say, I, uh, not that I was wrong, but now I understand and I've come to a new understanding. I see things more. I can see clearly now the rain. <laughs> you know? Dale duro, dale duro. You know, I got you, pie. Hey, but um, outside of that, guys, I got nothing else. It's uh, I know it's like past ten o'clock where you guys are at, and I want to be mindful of your time and, and that with your families. I love you guys. I appreciate you, Louis. Great, me getting to know you. Uh, I'm grateful yeah. for all the all the all the conversations we had in the comments here with with Jonathan Reyes and Raleigh, with Alex Diaz and Jonathan Gonzalez and getting to know Demiron and Michael Crispo and Michael Fierros and, and uh, who else? Adrian. Um, yeah, man, it's dope. The homie Haps Addison out in the desert, uh, gangster uh, reform dude doing ministry with the, with the marginalized shout out to him too. Um, I think it's called olive olive tree or olive branch ministries. Uh, shout out to him too, man. So um, says Sanford wants a farm and cattle. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I got nothing else, guys. Um, you guys got anything else you want to share? I'm good, man. I'm you good? good yeah, I need, I need well, to go take yeah. care of my daughter. All right. Well, until then, guys, it's uh, Hood Grace and Coromdale Podcast saying peace. Peace out. Peace.